Allow me to demonstrate the skill of Shaolin. <laughs> Hello everybody and welcome to episode one of uh, the new series, Legendary Kickboxers. Um, we're starting this series off with one of my favorite knockouts of all time. Um, this is uh, K1 World Grand Prix 2004 quarterfinals. This is Kao Klai Norsing at a sprightly 21 years old, uh, taking on Mighty Mo. Um, and there are lots of reasons why I like this. I mean, it's a first round knockout. He wasn't wasting much time. Um, he was very efficient in his approach and... You know, this was the thing with Kyle Clyde back in the day. So coming into this fight, as I said, he was 21 years old. He's 5'11 and he's 79 kilos. That's about 174 pounds. On the other side, you've got Mighty Mo, who is 6'1, 132 kilos. That's about 290 pounds. So he's, you know, he's, he's got a massive weight advantage, you know, over a hundred pound weight advantage on Kao Klai. Um Mighty Mo's record at this point was 25 and 2 with 20 knockouts. Um, Kao Klai on the other side was uh, 4 and 0 in K1 with one draw. Um, and overall in Muay Thai was 47, 22 and 2. Um, but obviously in Muay Thai, he's, he's more familiar. He's used to fighting people of his own size, which is considerably smaller than Mighty Mo. Um, and Kao Klai kind of made a name for himself back in the K1 days by taking on guys that were that were a lot bigger than him, taller, heavier, you know, bigger punchers, uh, you know, all skilled kickboxers as well. It was wasn't like he was just fighting big freak show guys. You know, he was taking on he was taking on very challenging individuals. You know, Mighty Mo being a good example of that. Um, so as you can imagine, you know, Mighty Mo, twenty of his twenty five wins have come by knockout, and he's fighting someone that's shorter and you know, over a hundred pounds lighter. Um, so on, the only thing on Mighty Mo's right, uh, mind right now is that he's going to come in and knock Kao Klai out and progress to the uh, the next round of the of the Grand Prix. Um, Mighty Mo had just, I believe it, yeah, he just beaten Gary Goodridge in the first round of the Eliminator. He knocked him down three times in the first round. Um, so Mo was used to dropping big guys. Gary Goodridge was a big dude, could take a hell of a punch. Um, on the flip side... Um, Kao Klai, uh had won a decision over over um, Alexei Ignashov. Um, you know, again, another skilled performance where he's utilizing his speed and his uh, and his um, his smarts, his wisdom from Muay Thai to his advantage. Um, but it, it was just you know it was a really interesting story, just given the size disadvantage of of uh, Kao Klai compared to everybody else in the heavyweight Grand Prix. You know, he went on after this to fight um, fight Musashi, who was a a really big kickboxer, and um, and uh, uh, lost a decision. Fascinating individual. Anyway, I'll skip through some of this because it, it's uh, the walk to the ring is like four miles. <clears throat> okay, mighty Mo Kalkla. I mean, you can see the size difference between the two. So, from Kalkla's perspective, he's dealing with a guy that is is a, a big power puncher that's going to take up a lot of space in the ring. Kao Klai's got to be on his bike, he's got to be moving laterally, and he's got to be trying to figure out the, the main attacking weapons of Mighty Mo. Um, and obviously, Kao Klai's done his research. He knows that, that Mo's got big overhand rights. You know, he's, he's a power puncher. He will kick, but he, he always looks quite quite uncomfortable throwing kicks. You know, the, the truth is that he wants to be a, you know, he wants to land his hands. He was a boxer and a bare knuckle fighter as well as an MMA fighter, but it was always about landing hands for Mighty Mo. Um, so Kao Klai, you know, he, he's coming in this to like, and you've also you've also got to think of the uh, you know the, the difference of impact in weapons as well. You know, Kao Klai is not going to be able to hurt Mighty Mo with his hands like another heavyweight would be able to. So anything he does with his hands has got to be supplementary to anything he's doing with his legs because his legs are the things that are really going to do the damage. Um, and he's got two choices. I mean, you know, d does he want to cruise around and uh, you know the edge of the ring and try and outpoint? Um, Mighty Mo, and, and you know, try not to get hit, or does he want to try and engage him and see if he can hurt him in some way, which you know is is fraught with uh, potential dangers and unconsciousness. Um, so Kao Klai, you know, is a skilled individual. He's had what sixty, you know, sixty, seventy Muay Thai fights. Um, got great footwork, 
knows how to play the game, knows how to kind of journey him a little bit, which is necessary for any good martial artist at this stage. You know, he's only 21, but as far as Muay Thai goes, that's that's pretty old. You know, he was probably probably had his first fight when he was about five. Um, so you can see him constantly testing the range between himself and his opponent. And Mo is doing what he can just to cut the space down without being too reckless. Because, you know, if he closes it down too too quickly, then Cao is going to clinch him. And that just keeps stalemating the fight. And Mo's got to find that sweet spot where he's got him on the ropes where he can't run away too much, but not too close where he gets clinched and maybe need and, you know, and, and doesn't get anywhere. But, so, I mean, that's that's the first inkling of what he's trying to do. You know, that's the, that's the first thing. If you've never seen Mighty Mo fight before, this is the first suggestion of what Mighty Mo's game is. I mean, he, th- he throws a big kick here. That's more to cover distance than anything. Throws it, but you, see, you can see he postures his right hand. You see how he's posturing this. It's like, you know, he's, he's threatening the right hand. I mean, maybe this is a trick he's learned to kind of supplement that punch. But he, he does that and then he throws a big kick, which Cao Kai checks with a, with a teep that just kind of skims off his midsection. Bit of a stalemate. Cao Kai then immediately reaches over the round the back of his head and pulls him close because he knows this right hand is the problem. Anytime he's, he's, he's at close range, he needs to have a hold of him. Otherwise, he's going to be ducking and dodging punches. And with this weight difference, Cao Kai takes, takes a shot on the side of his guard and, and you know he's not completely covered and he still gets knocked down. Um, and three knockdowns is is a you know is a TKO. So he, he's got to be cautious that he's not hitting the deck and l- at least looking like he's taking big shots. All right hand attack though here and a big swing for the right hand again and a little nod of acknowledgement from both guys. And then Cal Clyde's back to this and you'll see him do this all the way through the fight. He kind of zigzags back and forth between Mo. He does this. Wh- whenever he's over on this side, whenever he's over on this side here, he's tempting the right hand. He keeps drifting in this direction, but he he keeps doing it out of range. So before Mo can do anything, he has to cover distance to to do it, which you know, which is why he used the kick in the first place. Um, but you know, he, he changes direction back and forth, and it also allows him to to keep a bit of space behind him to keep moving. And anything he does when he engages, he immediately either either. <laughs> But he does one of two things. He either clinches if he's close enough. Okay, one of three things. He either clinches if he's close enough. He covers up and shells up and runs himself into the clinch, so he kind of smothers Mo's attack. Or if he's using his legs, which is a you know a, a real a veteran move. As soon as the kick goes up, if he either doesn't feel like it's going to go anywhere, or there's a big right hand coming over the top. He just falls to the floor and the referee steps in and stands him back up again. So, you know, he's playing to the edge of the rules of what's, you know, what's tolerable. Um, but the other thing you have to bear in mind is that there's some forgiveness because every, I mean, look at that. Look at that backdrop. Look, look at, I mean, it, it looks like a painted backdrop. It, it's just people just disappearing out into darkness. There were, there were hundreds of uh, thousands of people there. Thousands of people there, not hundreds of thousands. There were, there were thousands of people there. And and all of them are watching Cal Clay like outgunned, undersized, and so there's some forgiveness in the way that he's fighting. You know, if this was one two big guys fighting and one was playing the game that Cal Clay's playing, the crowd would get restless. But this these David and Goliath kind of fights that you got in these these open weight tournaments, um, there was always an intrigue and there was always a little bit of forgiveness with the the smaller fighter not being as engaging. And you know it's not like he's not taking a few risks. He does keep stepping in, but you can see there's a there's a disengagement. Anything he anything he, he engages with, he's either going all the way in afterwards, or he's he's already falling out. He's already on his way way out because he knows that the right hand's coming. There it was again. Look, he throw and he's throwing the lead kick. He's working the body here. He's just he's just softening Mo up. So when whenever he's throwing a kick, Mo's expecting it to come to the body. And and another valuable thing for that as well is it's, it's just going to soften him and weaken him and slow him down. So if the fight does go later, he's accumulated points and he's slowed his opponent down to the point where, you know, his gas tank might start to start to show. And then Cal Clay takes over in the last round. I mean, you've got to bear in mind, these are only three threes. So, you know, even the, even the biggest of heavyweights, unless they've got their foot on the gas from the start, most heavyweights can cruise for nine minutes at this level. Um, so Cal Clay is doing a smart job in investing in the legs and the body but also being prepared to bail out if it doesn't, you know, doesn't land solidly. Like, look, he skips in hard here. 
moves himself into range, lands the kick, but then Mo immediately has stepped. I mean, they're, they're basically treading on each other's foot here. Mo steps and he's throwing this over the top. Kalkalai could have probably dug his toes in here and kept his balance. But, you know, Mo throwing that, just clubbing him in the side. Kalkalai is already moving away. So it, although he felt some of the power, it wouldn't have uh, it wouldn't have particularly hurt him. But he would have acknowledged the fact that it was a right-hand counter from the kick. And he's moving again. So here's the zigzag again, look, that I was talking about. Zigzag back and forth. Here and then back and then here and then back. Forcing him to chase and change his angle. Constantly watching this right hand of Mo. Because he knows if he steps, you know, if he steps a foot into range here, Mo's going to be tempted to throw that. It's always there and postured and ready. See, at this point, Mo resets and then he circles back and Mo's thinking about the right hand again. <laughs> he's just he's just always postured because it's his power punch. Anything else he does, he's just to bridge the gap between throwing the right hand. Um Again, you know, Kyle Clyde just on his toes, light and, light and moving, never really particularly engaging. He throws a kick here. I think he falls over completely. I mean, it's like you, you can just see his bailing now. He's waiting for his opportunity. But, you know, Mo's getting a bit frustrated. He's, he's now starting to focus in on Kyle Clyde, who's not really doing anything to threaten him. Here we go again, look. Same thing again. Kaukai skips into the body, so he skips in closer range. Covers a bit of distance, comes into punching range. Mo does the same thing. He blocks to the body, takes his opportunity and throws the right hand. And, and, and he's going to the body again, look. He's cracking here to the body because he knows that's the only target he can hit. If he'd have gone to the head, he would have missed entirely. So Mo's making this adjustment and hit him what's there. But still the favoritism is towards his right hand. And Kaukai circles towards the power hand, disengage kick, circles back. He'll reset when there's a bit of space on this side when I gets pressured a bit there. But he, he keeps re-establishing that same rhythm. You know, he keeps sweeping from one way to the next. Tests again with the body kick, tries to get the right hand counter again. This will all make sense when you see the knockout because he's skipping in and kicking with that lead leg. There it is again. Skips in and kicks with the lead leg. So whenever Mo, whenever Mo sees him drift into into that range, he's now expecting that body kick to come thundering into his side. And you know he's probably confident he can take a couple more of them. And he's probably confident that if he exchanged one of those kicks to the body for a power punch to the head, it's probably going to work out pretty well for him. But what Mo doesn't realize is that all the way through this fight at this point is being programmed, and not once has Kalkai thrown his rear high kick. This is why it's one of my favorite fights. Is it just it gives me it gives me goosebumps when I watch it because it's like for he spent what th you know two minutes two minutes programming this big power puncher like sweeping back and forth in front of him throwing that lead snap kick to the body so stepping into range to throw the lead kick and Mo's throwing the 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 right hand to the body the right hook to the body there it is again before he falls over. But then on the finish, as he skips into range, instead of throwing the body kick, he comes high and throws the rear high kick. There's the kick again. The, the, the footwork's very similar. He skips into range. That's the part that Mo's seeing. And when Mo sees that, he's expecting the body kick to come. Let me play it forward again. You can see the frustration on Mo a little bit here. He's, you know, he's like, come on. Chasing, chasing with his with his left hook, prod, tie up, and that, that was something else that Kalkai used to do a lot as well. Um, and the crowd used to start to react to it. He grabs somebody, he clenched them, and he tap him a couple of sides in the rib, and then put his arm up like he was winning. It was like he's like he was scoring points. He was just always a bit of gamesmanship, frustrating his opponents, and being a smaller target that's that's seemingly unhittable. He's very frustrating. And look at the drift again. <laughs> okay, we're gonna get to replays in a moment, but I just, I just, I just love it full speed. So there, there's the drift you can see. I hate when they change camera angle. I'm trying to make a point. So he drifts one way, stops, bounce, drifts the other, drifts, and then skips. And as he skips into range, you can see Mo is down blocking, down blocking the kick that he's expecting, which he's expecting this leg to be coming into the midsection. 
and he's got that right hand ready and primed. He's brought this front foot up and that's moving into range. So he's closing distance down. So when this right hand comes looping over the top, and you've got to bear in mind, he's expecting cow collide. Hang on a minute. Watch this. Let me see if... Let me see how my skills are. So imagine then instead of cow collide being here where he's kicking his lead leg, he's actually here. And that's his base foot there. And he's actually kicking with his lead leg. So he's in... He's, <laughs> Idiot. So he he's in prime target if he's kicking with his lead leg for that right hand to come over the top. That probably makes no sense at all. It looks like looks like it's a child's drawing. You you get the point though. You know if if he if he's if he's hopped forward and he's planning on kicking the body, he's in direct uh, target of that overhand. But he's not. <laughs> he's thrown his rear kick, skips himself into range, gives Mo the impression that the lead hand the lead kick's coming. Mo goes to down block it so he can club him over the top and he eats a kick right to the side of the head. And, and uh, you know, I, I love Mo. I've enjoyed his fights, but this is, this is when you know it's a good knockout when the guy's trying to use his arm and it's just it's just not co cooperating. That's a hell of a knockout. For, for a guy that's nearly 300 pounds fighting a guy that's 175-ish, you know, that's that's precision striking, precision programming and precision striking. You know, creating a pattern, you move back and forth, you move back and forth, you skip into range and you hit that body shot and you wait for that right hand counter because you know it's there and you skip into range and allow him to counter and you you stumble back a little bit. There's, there's so much, there's a bit of theater going on as well. You know, he's, he's convincing Mo that that's the right way to go. He's reinforcing Mo's confidence in his right hand and, and he's also... He's also giving Mo the enough opportunities to to you know to try and cover a bit more distance on it, but I mean it just sets him up perfectly there. There's a there's a replay of it in a moment where you'll see what I'm talking about from a different angle. Um, here we go, here we go, here we go. <laughs> I mean it's poetic because it, it's it's the skip. It's from it's from stationary to skip. Mo sees that and he's ready for it, to, ready for the lead body kick. He's expecting this to be the target. I've changed my color, that don't work very well. He's expecting this kick to come up and smash into the into the ribs here. So he throws the right hand over the top, like a mortifier, cracks him on the chin while he's on one leg. And with the power that Mo's got, if he lands clean on the chin, he'll knock him out. That's the thought process in Mo. And and as he sees that jog forward, he commits fully. You see, watch the down block. Down block for the body kick, <laughs> which is not there. And he comes over the top, but unfortunately he's completely exposed and moving onto that kick. And I think there's a couple more replays and each one is as, as beautiful as the last. Skip across, the little jog he does in, the little double jog. Wait for it. Da dum dum kick right across the center line <laughs> really cool really cool I mean I didn't I didn't notice this before I'm just going to pull this back and, and see if I'm seeing the right thing okay so as he's skipping there, this is the this is the point right before he throws the rear leg. As he's skipping there, if you look at Kalkai's eye line, he's doing an Anderson Silver on him. He's looking down at the body, so he's also selling the body kick to Mo in that instant as well. And then he comes high. Pow! Oh. Absolute money. Really, really nice. And that is one of my favorite knockouts of all time, purely because there was a pattern that was laid out in front of Cal Kali. He He encouraged Mo to step into the trap and he had the counter there ready. And, you know, you, you, sometimes you do this and, and the counter doesn't stick and, you know, you have to uh, 
you have to readdress and you have to start laying new patterns and new counters or maybe run a couple of different patterns at the same time and see what works. But that was a, a nice clear pattern from Kyle Clyde, moving back and forward, teasing the right hand, snapping in that lead kick to try and encourage the right hand and then switching to the to the rear high kick as he committed to it. Um, really impressive. I hope you've enjoyed this first episode of Legendary Kickboxers. There'll be plenty more coming. Um, I think next one I'm going to do is uh, Mark Hunt against Ray Sefo, which is which is an excellent fight as well. Not quite as short as this one, though. Um, all right. Enjoy the fights, and I'll see you next time.